Good afternoon, uh, Pastor Bill Evans, um, Fellowship Baptist Church, Chetwin, B.C. I have to say that nowadays because other folk around the world are watching this. I was talking to a man the other day, he said he gets Chet TV in Little Fort. and was asking if I was his friend from Dawson Creek High School kid uh, who was about 80 years old. I said, not quite. Uh, we welcome you in the name of the Lord to our celebration. And I'm going to, this, for this afternoon, for my message today, uh, using a, a Valentine's message, and I don't know if you got one. But uh, Valentine's, the subject of love. And uh, so I'd like us to just spend a few moments uh, today in this message looking at that subject of love. One of my deacons was praying at the communion service. We had three people at church for tape our service there. And we had a little communion service. And I asked him to pray. And in his prayer, he used two words that made my message for the next week right away. And it was love prevailed. Jesus was uh, in the garden. He's praying, God, if there's a way that we could uh, change the, if this could be done a different way. Uh, he says, nonetheless, not my will, but yours be done. And in his prayer, he said, but love prevailed. And Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. And uh, from that, we've uh, developed this message I'd like to share with you today. And so we'll take a few minutes just together if we can and uh, uh, do this message together. My first thought in, is uh, uh, love's prevailing definition. What is the definition of love? Uh, well, Hollywood's got a whole lot different uh, message in love than um, I heard that uh, um, one of the guys yesterday who made, posted something for his, his girlfriend on Valentine's, my forever Valentine for now, and uh, forever Valentine for now, he's supposed to be a cut up, and that was the funny part of it. But um, Hollywood's idea of love is a whole lot different than what God's idea about love is, and it's a very special word. And in John, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse uh, 7 uh, on down to 10, we have some uh, things. My first point, love's prevailing definition. In verse 4, 7, uh, we're, we're told there, Beloved, let us love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God uh, and knows God. Love's prevailing definition. The first thing about it is that it is a practical thing. God does not tell us to, um, well, there's this thing about love, and, uh, well, it'd be nice if you guys could ever catch on and whatever and put it out there and you could never do it. No, he says love. Uh, he said, let us love one another. And with that statement, he tells us that it's a very practical thing we can do and we are challenged to do. And some versions read, we should love one another. He says, let us do that. And, and so the challenge of the definition of love, it's that understanding it's a practical thing, as, as he says right there in that scripture. So the, uh, we say the, it's a present thing. It should be ongoing and doing. Is, and the Greek idea has this ongoing, ongoing and doing thing. So uh, we do not get to choose uh, who we love. Love is not a, something that runs around and I choose you and I choose you. Uh, I don't know that like is the same word as love. It's not the same word as love. It's... There's an old poem, uh, to live above with the saints of love, oh, that will be glory, but to live below with the saints we know. Now, that's a different story, but we're challenged by God that we love, and especially in other passages, to love the brethren, those who are part of the body of Christ. Um, the love is a practical thing, not a mystical thing. I was in court the other day, and I saw above the judge's head a crest, a, uh, uh, the emblem for the court, and, and there was a unicorn there. And I asked the sheriff, I says, what is that unicorn? Is that a unicorn? She said, yes. And I started to laugh. And so justice in Canada has become this mystical thing, this mythical thing. Love, God says, is not this mythical thing. It's a practical thing, and he challenges us to do it. He carries on there. He says, so he says, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God. And so when we practice loving each other, he says, when you love others and love God, you get a birth certificate into, into his family. This is part of showing you're part of the family of God. It's like a birth certificate. It tells you maybe not how much you weigh and, and what exact time you were born, whatever, but it's a birth. this person's part of my family, part of the family of God. We sing the hymn at church. We, we, you'll notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family. And these folks are so dear. Uh, if one has a heartache, then we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. So love is a practical thing and it gets us a birth certificate. How practical is that? That God wants us to know that we can know that we're part of the family of God. And people say, can you know you're, you're a Christian? Can you know you're saved? Can you know you're going to heaven? The Bible says you can. 
That, this passage, 1 John, shows us all those things. So uh, it, it, connects us, it helps us connect the dots. When we know who, who God is and that he challenges us to be like him in this love relationship, then uh, we're on our way to being where God wants us to be. Um, we have this uh, um, certificate we talked about. Uh, verse 4, verse, verse 8, I want to give you that one there. Um, the one who does not love does not know God, for, for God is love. And there's the other definition about love. God is love. And the one who does not love does not know God. And so if you think you can pick and choose and uh, whatever, um, you, you, uh, you can't do that. Say, well, I love this person because why? If you just love people who love you back and whatever, an infant child comes home from the hospital. It's incapable of loving its parents back, but the parents love it. And with the house on fire, they'd throw the baby out to a fireman before if they couldn't get out. And that's love. But the baby doesn't have that love. And we're challenged to have that love. And, um, uh, and God gives it to us. And it's a certificate of a verification that we're part of the family of God. If we don't love, he says, you don't know God. It's simple uh, for, the, for the, the, the math to be done. The next thing we want to see is it's a positional thing. A uh, practical thing, and it's a positional thing. Uh, it says... Uh, and our definition of love, well, our love is our, my response to God for all the things that uh, I just enjoy in life, whatever. That's what love is. He says, actually, no, that's not the answer. Uh, he says it's a positional thing. He says, in this is love. And it's not that we, this verse 10, this is, in this is love. It's not that we love God. What, what? Yeah, he says, it's not about you loving me. That's not what love is. It says, because really the love that we offer God, best love, heart love, all you want, make all your little hearts all you want. About The best we offer to God is nothing in comparison to his love for us. So he says, in this is love. It's not that we love God, but that he loves us. And what, what an interesting verse where you were, in this is love. This is what love is. It's not that we love God, but that he loved us. And that love that he exercised towards us is a love that, uh, where, he, where he gives uh, to us, his people, uh, what is important for us. The, um, when, when he says that, in this is love, not that we love God, but. The but there is, is a contrast, a, a word that uh, if the French a little statement we uh, added, which says, au contraire. It's not about our love, it's about his love for us. And if you think it's about us, he says, au contraire. It's about my love for you. That's what the real definition of love is about. And so God's focus love is on us. And he focuses his love and he puts his love on us. And uh, as an infant child, we receive that love. Uh, and, and he gets little reciprocation in measure to the great love that he gives to us. Love's prevailing definition leads us to love's prevailing action. Love's prevailing action and the great love prevailing action found in the scriptures, the word of God is John 3, 16. Remember that the old, back in the old days, uh, it used to be around the hockey rinks in the corner, John 3, 16, and they didn't win a peg one day and there was a big sign up on a billboard that says, you tell them, Johnny, you tell them, Johnny, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You tell them, Johnny, was the sign on the... Um, apartment building there. God so loved that he gave. Love is a giving. Love is an, action, an active um, idea. The prevail is a prevailing action. So first off, he gives his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. One and only son was found in Jesus and God gave him to the earth for us. We took him and hung him up on a cross at Easter. We'll celebrate that in some weeks. And we hung him up on a cross and he, and he bored a tomb for the weekend because uh, he had a plan that was going to be raised on Sunday. But we hung him on the cross, and he died for our sins. God so loved the world that he let his son do that for us. That's the first thing his action, love, prevailing action does. And then the next thing is, is that he gives us his word. And in his word, he tells us the wonderful passage that I often use very often at uh, weddings is the first Corinthians 13. It's a passage about love. And, and somebody said, if you took all the times of first Corinthians 13 and read the word, when you saw the word love, put the word Jesus in there or Christ. It says, um, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not Christ, I'm nothing. And that fits on. But in verse four, it says, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. It's not arrogant. Love does not act unbecoming. It always plays nice. 
It does not seek its own. It's not bent on having its own way, I tell couples. It's not provoked. If you're in a love relationship and you're provoked at every little nitpicking thing that goes wrong, you're not in love. You're just in some kind of a mess that you're not happy in, and uh, you need to deal with that. Because love is not provoked, it says, and does not take into account a wrong suffered. Uh, the, the accountant doesn't keep, here's the ledger. You did this, 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 and you only did this over here, one flower for Valentine's. You're in trouble. Love doesn't keep that account of wrong, it says. And so um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness. Whatever's not right, but it rejoices with the truth. And I always tell couples that truth be the currency of your relationship. The talk of your relationship is always in, in truth and um, important. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what the actions of the, uh, the love word is about. Uh, the action of uh, working out love in a relationship where we love Christ and uh, work out how he wants us to be. All those things, uh, being careful, working with truth and such like. Uh, so we go through there, all through those uh, patient, long-suffering is with human relations there. And then all that list, you can read that for yourself in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. The last point I have, just as we close, love's prevailing outcome. And the outcome of love as we practice, it's, as it's seen in the Word of God, is this. It says there, um, in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, the last part says, love never fails. At the end of the chapter, it says, there's three things that are in the world, faith, hope, and love. These three abide, but the greatest of these is love. And at the end of chapter 8, verse start of verse 9, love never fails. And uh, that's a, a wonderful outwork, outcome of our love relationship. If we practice it, uh, our, our love is, is such, it's, it's put on and it does not uh, fail, does not fall away. Romans 5, 8 has an interesting uh, expression. But God commands his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The, the Greek has the idea, stands together. Uh, I was likened it to a, a stuke of sheaves for the farmers in our town. They were out in the old when they were kids. You picked up the sheaves and you stood them in a stook so that they would stay dry if the rain came. And you're sitting, That's the idea, what God commends his love, demonstrates his love, puts together his people in love so that he... Um, uh, it wants us to know that he commends his love toward us and that while we, and he says, so that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he keeps going back to that idea that uh, the righteousness, it's not about our love because our love falls so short, but it's his great love that for which he's concerned. And he stands by, stands together, places us together in the family of God and the church of Christ, places us there. Even while we're still sinners, he does this for us and he loves us. And brings us. And then verse 9 of that Romans passage, Romans 5 9 says, And he justifies us. And justifies us is like what? It's being made like I never sinned. I'm dead, guilty before God. But he says, Pastor Bill, you're guilty, but I'm going to let you go because my son died for your sin. 1 John 4, verse 9b, the last part of 9 goes back there. And then we have there that we might live through his son. And he tells us that he's done all these things so that we might live through his son. And we have uh, his uh, son there dying for us, and it's all about him. And um, there's a verse that he uses there in 410 to make a propitiation, to make an atonement with God for our sin. God wants to bring us to an atonement um, relationship with himself, at one with himself, because our sins are dealt with. We can't stand before a holy God with our sin. Christ died to save us from those. I trust your heart will be blessed with these thoughts. As we've left them with you, uh, the Lord might use them in the days ahead. Your heart might be encouraged. Um, share with a friend if you're encouraged by the message. And uh, we thank you, uh, Chat TV, for this opportunity to share today. Thank you.